Tell us why the church believes it's so important to pursue a missing or fleeing staffer. Why not just, why does the church not allow them just to just leave and then start a new life? Why does the church pursue them? They pursue them for concerns for security. And I'm going to tell you, quite frankly, it's the security of David Miscavige. When I got into the Sea Org in 1978, all the way through 1982, uh, a four-year period when L. Ron Hubbard was directly on the lines, and I went to L. Ron Hubbard's base in the desert in La Quinta. There was no fence there. There was no concern about somebody blowing. I mean, there was a concern, but you didn't go, you have these dragnets that would go across the country. In fact, Hubbard had a policy, if someone wants to leave, give them a confessional. But the rule was, and it was in writing, you must say sayonara to the guy within 72 hours. You had, if you wanted to you know, patch the guy up, make sure he wasn't going to be nattery or attacking the organization, if you wanted to do that through sex checks and confessionals, you had 72 hours to do it. The policy was, he's gone. It wasn't until Miscavige did his whole purges and takeovers through 81, 82, where he was purging a lot of high-level people and creating enemies, David Mayo, Dee Dee Riesdorf, the former COCMO, Gail Riesdorf, um, Bill Franks, the former EDA, all these people that he knocked out in these purges um, felt slighted and abused directly by him and became um, antagonistic, went to the media, assisted in lawsuits, and this was from the very beginning of his reign, um, that literally this this whole policy was thrown out the window and it became and that's where we had the entrance of rather than you know if somebody wants to leave good riddance it became you ain't gonna leave until we're absolutely certain that you love David Miscavige and you would never say anything bad about him and this holds true for staff in Clearwater